Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and uh, yeah, as you can see from the title, this is for the movie Flash Gordon from 1980. Now I have watched this movie before, twice at least uh, as, as far as I remember, but it's been a long time since I've seen it. Um, meant to watch it a few years ago, I think, uh, once again on a, on a streaming service, but uh, yeah, it's been a while. So. <laughs> Anyway, like I mentioned, it's from 1980. It's a space opera, so I don't really think you can call it a science fiction movie based on the comics Flash Gordon. Um, I don't remember if I've actually watched any cartoons or this seems to be something familiar from my childhood. Maybe I've seen a couple of episodes of some cartoons or something like that, but I don't really remember anything regarding comic book wise, but it is based on the King, and I'm getting a mosquito over here, King Features comic strip of the same name. And the movie stars Sandy Jones, who I am actually sorry to hear that he didn't really have a much of a career in movies. The only other things I've seen him is that one episode of uh, uh, Stargate SG-1, where he does a pretty pro... He did, uh, it's just one uh, guest role, but he does a really good job, and I think that that kind of role should have actually been amazing for him, kind of like a bounty hunter space, uh, alien bounty hunter. And the other one is, of course, in Ted 2, where he has got a prominent role. Uh, Melody Anderson, uh, Ornella Moody, who I've seen a couple of other movies before. Uh, Max von Zidal, who plays Emperor Ming. Uh, and Topol, with Timothy Dalton, uh, Mary Angela Melaro, Brian Blessed, and Peter Wingard in supporting roles. Uh, so I do remember a lot from the movie when I was watching it. Uh, sorry, I remembered a lot of the scenes when I was watching it um, just a couple of days ago, a couple of nights ago. And, uh, well, I, everybody knows the story. Uh, Ming is attacking Earth, using his weapons to actually, uh, you know, cause havoc on the moon and uh, causing, uh, you know, destruction on the Earth because he believes humanity is finally going to um, uh, advance enough technology wise and uh, you know to be a threat so he wants to eliminate them before that uh, Professor Zarkov uh, and this was the only surprise I had I actually in my mind uh, I, ha I had a feeling that he would be much more older uh, for some reason I thought it was a much more older actor uh, or older character at least uh, but yeah it isn't <laughs> he was that old so he's the only scientist who actually believes that there's an alien force against it. So he's got a spaceship that uh, he needs to get done. He tries to force one of his assistants to go through, but that guy leaves. Um, Flash Gordon and uh, reporter uh, Dale Arden are on. Flash Gordon is a football player. Dale Arden, they're on a ship that has to crash land nearby. They try to look for help and run into Professor Zarkov. So he forces them to actually be... You know, because he needs an additional person to actually set the uh, uh, the rocket ship off and uh, he at gunpoint he forces them unfortunately those two are uh, unwilling uh, passengers but it all turns out for the good <laughs> uh, so yeah so Ming is you know Ming the merciless he is uh, threatens to kill them he likes uh, Dale Arden when seeing her of course Dale and uh, uh, Flash have eyes for each other there's his daughter. Uh, I forgot the, the character's name, the princess. Uh, princess Aura, and uh, she also, she has her eyes set on Flash Gordon, unfortunately. But she seems to be this uh, uh, woman who kind of hops into different people's bed, including uh, Prince Baron, played by Timothy Dalton. And uh, uh, so she has, uh, helps to rescue uh, Flash Gordon, who is about to be killed by. <coughs> the uh, by Emperor Ming's uh, people and uh, oh yeah Peter Wingard is the actor who plays General Cletus or Clytus I can't remember how it's pronounced and uh, I thought his costume was pretty good uh, even you know especially for 1980 it was almost like a Skeletor kind of look but with more metal <laughs> and uh, I really like that uh, the character as a villain uh, overall it's a pretty enjoyable movie. Of course, the special effects do not hold up uh, to now. Uh, and, you know, it kind of s seems like it. I mean, you, you, you really do feel it. The CGI is kind of like not that great. The soundtrack is amazing, by the way. Of course, Queen, the legendary rock band is, uh, you know, behind it. Now, this was a surprise for me. 
And I was looking into it. The movie was made on a budget of around 20 to 27 million dollars based on, you know, advertising and all that stuff. Advertising, marketing, excuse me, still got that bad phone. Uh, the box office, uh, it made only 27.1 million. But then I realized it's actually only for North America. So I'm pretty sure it would have made a lot more elsewhere. I mean, the movie's got kind of like an iconic status among people who love uh, a little bit of the science fiction genre and the comic book genre as well. Uh, let's see. Let me see. <coughs> Sorry, my battery ran out. Uh, let me just straighten that over here. Uh, so I had to quickly charge. Um, yeah, so the movie, like I mentioned, it didn't make much at the box office. However, it's a pretty iconic movie. A lot of people love this, um, especially from those who love the comic book uh, movies, as well as the uh, from the science fiction. I think so. I do enjoy this, but I found it a little bit boring this time. And like I mentioned, I had watched this earlier, but I found it a little bit, you know, cheesy and daddy here and, and corny here and there. But I guess that's to be expected. Uh, so, like I mentioned, even though it only made 27.1 million in the box uh, in North America, I think overall it probably did get a lot more. There was a lot of hype because of the, from the soundtrack was by Queen, by the way, who does the uh, theme song as well, Flash. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. Excuse my cold. Uh, and towards the end, you know, so there's a question mark. Did Ming actually die or not? So I think they had plans to make a movie, but a sequel, but apparently he had some issues. So I was actually sad to hear that uh, Sam D. Jones didn't have much of a, of a career after this movie. And uh, he apparently uh, worked as a security guard or something like that. Maybe ran his own business as well or something like that. Uh, so he mentioned that his wife did tell him that, you know, he had to walk away from uh, some he didn't get some rules because of all that anyway uh, what would I give this movie <laughs> out of 10 I'm going to give it a 7 like I said it's a pretty iconic movie but you know I think this time I was a little bit more disappointed I think when I was younger I probably enjoyed this movie a lot more uh, and it doesn't stand the test of time as much but it's still fun to watch you know <laughs> anyway that's it, so I uh, wanted to finish off that part of the movie, so uh, anyway, take care guys, uh, cheers, and uh, now it definitely is time for me to go to bed, so good night.